Blade 2 is the Wesley Snipes mega blockbuster hit movie where he showed the world vampire hunters hunting vampire vampires with vampire hunting vampire hunters. Any questions? It starts off with the guys from Bros whose lives are going exactly how you expect. <laughs> But things are looking up because he just found a blood bank that doesn't ask a lot of questions. They even buy it in the jar. While the Steven Seagal style kill rooms do raise some red flags, he really needs that $50. <coughs> but then something just doesn't seem right about this perfectly normal procedure slash incinerator room. No, Sit no. down, please. When it suddenly hits him, there's a camera, which is a blatant HIPAA violation, you non-compliant fucks. <laughs> Tired of always being a victim, bro snaps <laughs> and goes to town on the entire clinic with his fucked up British teeth. Now Snipes is running around, lighting up bitches left and right for no reason, because the movie knows we don't fucking need one. Then it's just a routine 80 foot submachine gun swan dive into motorcycle bullfighting and capped off with the old stick in the spokes trick. After flirting with a 68 charger, he realizes there hasn't been a fight scene in a full minute, which is total bullshit. Luckily, that ends when it turns out not only do these guys have the douchiest hair ever, but those sick sons of bitches are hoarding all the tasty moo cow. Not content with just murdering the fuck out of them. He does the most disrespectful move possible. A slap uppercut that makes him explode out of pure shame. Then after taking out a few bystanders with dick shots, just because he's on a fucking roll, he gets what he came for. Let's go. Which is a surprise gift for his buddy Boondocks. His dad. He tells him, wow, that's great, but also not his fucking dad. I see you kill a motherfucker right now. Okay, Seagal, let's tone it down a notch. And he wasn't asking. Now the movie pivots to a coming of age story. Where'd you dig up this shit, bird? Where they learn that true forgive, just kidding, fucking ninjas. After a sword fight square dance that goes on way too long and also not long enough. We find out they're just delivering mail and the postal service in the Czech Republic is no fucking joke. So they fly out to meet death. But there's no time for shitty board games because bro has a rare form of being British that's contagious. It spreads through the human bloodstream and spreading fast. Like cancer. Luckily, they were able to put together an all-star team of Mad Max Rejects, Fat Burger Guy, a poor man's Jackie Chan, Jay Moore, and Ron Perlman, who somehow found a way to be even uglier. That's for that Dungeon Siege movie. And so was that. Oh! Now you got an explosive device stuck to the back of your head. That is if he even thinks about starring in an Uva Bull movie ever again. Any questions? Now the movie shows off its versatility as it moves seamlessly between science talk. 45 9 millimeter caliber filled with silver nitrate. And insane bullshit. This hyper velocity steak gun spits out a silver steak at 6,000 feet per second. Their plan is to stick out as much as humanly possible, sneak past the chubby trash bag guard, then party their asses off while they wait for the British to attack. But Murphy's hopped up on donuts and Powerpuff Girls, so he says F that and looks for them. But all he can find is this stupid boy band who Steven Seagal run after him. While that's happening, Bro shows up and wants to negotiate. But peace talks break down for mysterious reasons. 
Luckily, they discover that what they lack in dental care, they make up for in pastiness. But Snipes has never been bothered by the sun for some reason, so he doesn't get what all the fuss is about. Now, he's gonna hit those snobby f**ks where they live. But first, the nuclear steak gun is too grounded in reality. Spits out a silver steak at 6,000 feet per second. So how about a grenade that releases slow-moving sunlight? We check in with Death, who's eating jello with a carving fork. And we're not gonna check in on Death anymore. Anyways, Snipes says some cold shit. I don't expect everybody to make it back tomorrow. Sure, they were planning to kill him, and still are, but that doesn't make it sting any less. After making sure they still have the weapons that didn't work last time, they reveal their big secret. <laughs> Marmite body spray, which those sick f**ks can't resist. So they head into the sewers, because it just seems like their kind of place. And oh shit, the Mad Max reject is immediately Daniel Craig. She somehow forgets she just has to point her flashlight at him. But nobody cares about them, and I'm glad they die stupidly. Speaking of stupid, they forget why they're even there and decide swimming in sewer water is a great f***ing idea. <laughs> f***ing idiot. Meanwhile, Pearlman spent the last 10 minutes trying to figure out how this handle works. At least we still have Fatburger and El Duce. <laughs> Never mind, they're fighting each other. This entire team is a massive failure and should have never even been attempted. So Snipes tells them to f*** off. Go, 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 go. And if these redcoats think they're gonna pull that stamp tax shit on him, you obviously do not know who you are f***ing with. But son of a bitch, when they want their taxes, they're suddenly less incompetent. Luckily, he comes across a whole box of bullshit bombs and combining his advanced knowledge of gravitational lensing and wanted with Angelina Jolie, he curves that sh** all over the place and sends those limey fucks back to hell. But the victory is short-lived when a fair evasion he's been running from for years finally catches up with him. When he comes to, the movie decides to just shotgun all the story sh** at once. There's a traitor. Somebody's been keeping tabs on us from inside. Bros are clones created in a lab. Was simply the next logical step. And given the Schwarzer some sh**. I give it to him, of course. He's the traitor. To him. Pearlman's still ugly. <sighs> And now they need to find out why Snipes does so well in the sun. Find the missing key. F***ing idiots. There's also some family drama. And you have used us, your own children. But nobody gives a shit because we just hit the minimum amount of story to legally be called a movie. So back to the good shit. Bro is trying to stay relevant after getting bitch slapped earlier and is coming off kind of desperate. Il Duce is kicking Pearlman in the nuts, who responds by shooting him with his railgun and makes him drop his umbrella like a total dick. But all Snipes can think about is that incredible Kool-Aid. F*** you, it's delicious, and I'm not going to pretend like it isn't. Now that he's hopped up on that cherry goodness, these Cobra Troopers are so f***ed. After straight up clowning these jabronis, he makes Pearlman look like a bitch, but goes too far and says some hateful words. Can you blush? Which is not cool. And now it is. Now we're back with Bro, who we forgot was still a part of this. And if you don't think their teeth are completely jacked up, he bites him in the neck. And he bleeds out of his 
fucking mouth. It's also green, but I think we get the point. Now it's the final showdown between Blade and Bro, and it's hard to take him seriously when we know he could be taken out by a fucking flashlight. But I guess Knives forgot his. So he tries draining his oil. Then some brief kneel fighting before remembering they both have self-respect. After fighting for a really long time, Snipes figures maybe he should try the sword thing again, and this time it fucking works. It is his only weapon, but I'm sure punches would have worked eventually. Strange. It, it no more. That's great. Nobody gives a shit. Anyways, Gal Ghetto is still alive, so he promises to take her somewhere safe. And hey, guess what? Fuck you. And they both have a good laugh about that. Then, in a shocking twist of an ending that's very unnecessary, we find out Snipes is now working as a stripper in London. Well, you didn't think I forgot about you, did you? And that's all.